Hey guys, welcome back to the shop for part four, the final installment of our Texas Bowie Knife build, first knife, first Bowie Knife build in Texas here. Damascus steel or pattern welded steel blade. If you haven't seen the first three installments, don't miss out on those. Building this thing from scratch, forging out the Damascus and so forth. So we're getting pretty close now, but there's still a lot of things to do. So the in the last uh, episode, Number three, you saw we got the the handle, the bit of handle wood block fitted to the tang, and that's a sort of a tedious task. But now we need to bed the tang in in the handle wood block, and what that does is it fills in all the gaps that are present with the way we have bored out or drilled out and carved out that slot that uh, area for the tang and we want to have a clean uh, tight fit with no gaps and no areas that are unsupported on the inside there part of the reason for that is if you if you don't have consistent or full coverage or support on that tang inside the handle there there are going to be just a few areas that are taking all of the force or shock of the knife tang inside that handle when it's being used. And that can lead to handle material failure. So we don't want that to happen. Like if somebody's going to chop with this or whatever, you know, it's, it's all about building a quality blade here. So. As you can see, I, I wrapped it up with some Teflon tape, put some uh, petroleum jelly on there to keep the tang from sticking inside of the handle block. So an important little tip on doing this is to remove the handle block before the epoxy is 100% cured. So this is like, I think probably two hours after and it's still somewhat flexible and that makes pulling the block off m much easier. So what actually happened on this first round is I didn't put enough epoxy in to bed to bed that fully. And so here I'm cleaning it out a little bit more, it's just scraping the sides, getting make, there's a little pieces of Teflon tape in there and then I want to make sure that there's clean, fresh uh, epoxy and even in places wood again for the new epoxy to bond to. So there's the second try and you can see that we got all the gaps filled up and it's, a, it's one continuous uh, clean and tight fitting slot so so we've uh, accomplished what we're trying to do there and in, in the second time around I didn't use any Teflon tape it didn't seem to really be useful or you know necessary just the petroleum jelly and uh, right on the tang and the guard areas so now I need to square up the handlewood block in relation to what, how it sits on the knife and so you can see there's lines on the end of the block um, that are that are drawn with where the guard sits and so I want to square those sides up and then square the opposite sides up to those so we have you know four square sides that are consistent with how it sits on the knife and here I'm marking out roughly where we need to grind or, or sand off the material. I want a slight tapered uh, tapered contour or uh, shape to this to this knife handle going from the guard out to the butt. And then I'm getting a bit of a center line here on the knife and from there I can sort of sketch in the contours I want on the, on the sides or the top and bottom actually of the uh, of the knife handle. That was kind of a rough sketch here. I'm trying to make a pattern that's going to give me more repeatable or precise uh, radiuses there and I'm trying to use a couple of horseshoes to accomplish that. In the end I sort of finished those radiuses on on the uh, large contact wheel and so they weren't exactly what I had originally marked out anyway, but that's not a big deal. At least this gives me a, a, a starting point that's uh, consistent and try to keep everything symmetrical and, and uh, where it needs to be. So roughing that out on the belt grinder here and uh, 
That's, as you can see right here, that's why it's important that all four sides were square to each other in relation to the knife. So we can do that operation I just did. So I had to remark the uh, taper on the on the knife handle again because I just ground it off. <laughs> so redo that there, but continue taking material off. And so you, obviously you can see that the style of handle I'm going for here is sort of a Old West style. And I mentioned this earlier with, with the guard that, that we're working on for the knife, we made for the knife here, that the overall kind of motif or feel that I'm going for is uh, something that's reminiscent of some of the original Bowie knives. And like I mentioned, uh, that's a pretty wide range to, to talk about, but some of these styles and designs are things that you see in that historical period. So that's kind of what I'm going for here. So still more material to take off, but I'm doing a, a, uh, a chamfer on the edges of, of the uh, handle wood right here. So it's going to angle down into the guard area, which makes the handle block wider than the guard. And this gives you a nice transition to the guard. So a couple reasons for that is I don't want to narrow the, I don't want to sand the handle wood all the way down to the width of the guard because that would just be a little too narrow in my opinion. Also, this is a easier way to match up two, uh, two surfaces together that, that need to meet up. And so one good thing about it is if your handle wood shrinks or expands due to any kind of humidity or, or, or conditions like that, it is not going to be a big issue like it, like it is if you cleanly or precisely match up you know, your handle material to a guard or something like that to where if, if it raises up just a tiny fraction due to humidity or whatever, you can feel that very easily, that little edge that, that comes up when, when, it, when it expands or conversely if it contracts. And so you don't have to deal with that with this kind of fit up here. It's, uh, it's not gonna, it's not gonna do that. If it does expand or contract at all, you're not gonna be able to tell. It's not gonna change the look of the knife. So that's one reason for this, this method. I've heard it, I've heard it uh, referred to as a museum f fit, which I don't understand the correlation. I don't know why some people call it that, other people don't call it that. I don't know what the proper technical term for it is, so I don't call it a museum fit, but anyway, that's what it does. All right, so we need to drill a hole through this handle wood and the tang for the pin that's gonna help secure the handle to the tang. And of course our steel is hardened and tempered, so very difficult to drill through, if not impossible, without a carbide drill bit or something like that. But very easy to fix. Simply heat that tang up to a, a slight glow, so about you know, 1300, 1350 degrees briefly, and let it air cool. And you have a tang that drills easily. You've done a quick spheridizing cycle on that steel. You want to make sure that you don't heat it up to austenitizing temperature, which is a little over 1400 degrees. That would defeat your purpose. You're simply um, spheridizing that, segregating those carbides in that tempered Martin site. So it works very well. And there we have it. Now, another little note on that. It works best if you uh, quickly put that heat on the steel and get it up to temperature as quick as possible if you sit there and hold uh, hold some heat on there. It's going to give it a chance to travel up, even if it's not, you know, all the way up to glowing. It's going to give it a chance to creep up to the blade and then compromise the hardness of your blade. So you don't want to do that. So for that reason, a full size, you know, acetylene or propane oxygen torch that really puts the heat out works better than a small propane torch that would take longer to get up to heat. So some quick notes on that. So hand sanding. Um, Got to go over the whole blade again, uh, up to a thousand grit, which is sort of the minimum you probably want to do, depending on the, the layers of your Damascus steel or pattern welded steel. The higher the layers, typically the uh, you don't have to go up to quite as high a grit on your sandpaper, but in my opinion, a thousand grit's sort of a minimum. In this case, with our 348 layer billet, we should be just fine. It's going to give us a nice, nice finish. So 
getting this into the ferric chloride, getting it etched. I did put my logo on there, as you saw, with a little electro etching there. And there's the pattern. You can see that kind of a modified ladder pattern. I think it turned out pretty cool. I personally do not care for the super, um, cons what's the word, consistent or very, you know, the ladder patterns that are just, just lines down the, down the blade. I don't, I don't care for that too much. I like this uh, slightly randomized and uh, uh, just more undulating pattern, if you will. I, I find that to be pretty neat. And we got some nice chatoyants going on there, so that's pretty cool. And uh, I'm pretty happy with how the pattern turned out on this blade. All right, continuing on, switch out that buffing wheel for a clean wheel with no, no buffing compound on it. And uh, drop the nut on the floor. So I'm, I'm going over the handle again after applying tongue oil to it multiple times and the tongue oil is mostly dry, so I'm, I'm just buffing it out with the uh, clean cotton wheel here and uh, getting a little bit more polish on it. Now it's time to assemble the knife. We've, we've done everything we're gonna do at this point except for put the knife together and then finish out the pin and that kind of thing. And I'm just making sure that we get all the buffing compound and crud out of the, out of the uh, guard area using some rubbing alcohol Important side note, of course, too, is that I did clean out the uh, leftover petroleum jelly from inside our handle block uh, where we bedded the tang. That's important, obviously, to make sure that the tang will bond in there properly. It shouldn't take too much epoxy because we have a complete uh, bedded fit for the tang, so most of that's going to squish back out, but just make sure that we have enough on there and then up uh, between the tang and the guard as well. So I'll slide that down and uh, make sure that's got plenty in there. Of course, epoxy on my gloves, so now I can't really grab the handle, handle block sort of defeats the purpose of a glove, but hey, you get it done here. I should have taped the handle block. <laughs> I did not, I didn't think of that. I should have taped the handle block up before assembling it, and that would have uh, made it a little easier. Eh, in the end, I wiped it all off anyway, but probably would have been better. Get some epoxy on that pin. This is a 530 seconds brass pin. And of course, when you're, when you're drilling for pins, make sure that you use the appropriate size drill bit, which is not the same size drill bit. You need something that's about several thousands bigger so that you can actually get your pin into your material without ruining it. Got that pin in there. So from here on out, it was simply a matter of continually and carefully wiping out the excess epoxy that continued to seep out for about 20 or 30 minutes, you know, about the time that it took the epoxy to set up and, and cease to be, um, until it gained enough viscosity to stop seeping out as it cured. And so that's what I'm doing here with the uh, Q-tips, just all around these gaps until it stopped coming out. So using a little bit of WD-40 to, as a solvent to make sure it doesn't, didn't stick to any surfaces on the outside there. So next morning here, get that, that epoxy's all cured up and grind the brass pin down a little bit and we're ready to finish that pin. And so I'm using a little bit of a shield from a piece of sheet steel that I made, trying to use that to uh, protect the handle wood. So I had to drill a bigger hole, a quarter inch hole, because I was gonna pin that pin down and then that piece of steel would have been stuck. That 3 16 inch hole wasn't big enough. So as you can see here, I've abandoned using, abandoned using that and I'm just 
going for it. This is so this is me pretending that I know how to do a or trying to figure out how to do a domed pin. Um, so now I've got this little um, tool here that I made just by drilling slightly into the end with a quarter inch drill bit, and that's going to allow me to dome it a little better. It's not completely dome, it's kind of a flat top, but it, I think it turned out pretty good. Sort of a, a, a button look to that pin and just uh, tap that down a few dozen times on each side and it turned out all right. So buffing out the handle now with some compound and of course the, the brass pin, just making sure that that is uh, consistent as possible all the way around and getting everything buffed up and, and shined. So we're really close to being finished here. And of course the, uh, the handle wood, the Curly Koa buffed out nicer once, once it had some oil on it overnight. So that turned out pretty good. Putting a nice razor sharp edge on the blade here using my sharpening stones, the Arkansas stone, and then finally the strop. And yes, it's razor sharp just as it was in our test earlier in the previous episodes. And there's the finished product, guys. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. I really like the blade, the Damascus or pattern welded steel, the pattern on it. I think that turned out really great. I like how the wood and the brass kind of come together on this build. I think it comes together pretty nicely as, a, as an entire deal here. I think I was able to pull off the motif that I was going for, which is kind of a early to mid era Bowie knife style, as you as you see in the in the books, as it were. So I think it turned out pretty good. As always, it was a learning experience, and uh, you know, tried some new things that I haven't done before. Um, you know, you always want to you always want to push yourself and, and and improve your skills. So that's one of the joys of bladesmithing and knife making is you know trying to build a better blade than you did last time. So I'm I'm excited I'm excited about the upcoming projects I have in mind for the channel here guys. So appreciate you being here and thanks for watching. As always, we'll see you on the next video.